Yeah. Looks like it started without you. The extension is just the location of the frame, and it's all it's telling you is it's roughly a half inch lower than it was the last time a test was run. And so all I'm going to do is zero out all those values, and I hit this balance all up here, and that gives me fresh values for those numbers. And there's a little bit of variance on these numbers. That's because this load cell is really sensitive and really expensive. This is like $10,000 $10, of the machine. I can pull on it and, and vary these things. Okay. You can buy different load cells. This is the biggest load cell. 50 kilonewtons is the biggest load cell you can put on this machine. But you could buy a 5 kilonewton load cell. Why would you buy a 5 kilonewton versus a 50? The difference is that think of the think of a 50 is going to have a little more range of values than a five and have a really tight range. So let's say that everything you tested was like yarn. Well, it'd be make more sense to have. And you can also buy other load cells and change them out if you need to. I have a question: Like when you're doing the 10,000 testing, like say you want to like 10,000 test, like you know, like a piece of aluminum that's supposed to be for a wing on a plane. How do they like test that? Normally on tensile on tensile test you have to have a prepared specimen. So you get a piece of the material and you test it. The most commonly tested method is something called a dog bone. And I'll show you a dog bone. It basically it looks like a dog bone. It looks very similar to this, except it's flat. So we're ready to run a test. So what I'm going to do here, I've got this is what my graph generation is going to look like when I'm done. But when I run the test, I prefer to come over here. I hit this little icon in the corner. That gives me just the graph portion. And what you're going to see as the test progresses is that information curve smooths out because it's getting a lot more data points along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and start the test. So ready? are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. Go. Notice how the graph is curvy? Oh, it's doing stuff. Oh. Oh. Over here is the amount of force in pounds that's being applied. Down here is how much the metal is stretching. Okay, you can't really see it now, but towards the end you'll you'll be able to see where the metal is going to fail. What we'll do is we'll run this test and then we're going to go in to the lab and I'm going to explain what the results show us. Okay, and then after that, you guys are bona fide tensile testers. <laughs> this test that we're running now may take almost two minutes, where before, like I said, it'd be a whole class meeting, and it wouldn't be near as accurate. Hmm. What do you notice about that line? It's straight. It's, straight. it's a straight line, right? <laughs> In the function of metals, the elastic portion of the metal is a straight line. So the straight line indicates the elastic range. At some point, you're going to see a nose over. And that nose over indicates that you're going to the plastic range, where the metal's saying, you know what, you win. 50 kilonewtons is too much for me. So can we test like a dry spaghetti noodle versus a wet spaghetti noodle and see if there's a If you had a 3 8 diameter, those jaws only accept certain diameters. So mm -hmm. what do you notice of the curve? Take a look at the curve. What's happening? It's flattening out. What's happening now? It's getting more it, plastic. It's getting plastic. The metal's plastic. transitioning, yes. Oh, gosh. Can't handle the pressure. Now, what did I tell you earlier about the extensometer? I have to pull it, right? Because if I don't, it snaps, I could destroy the extensiometer. So at some point, hopefully, the software is going to prompt me to pull the extensiometer. That's handy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And if it doesn't? It'll break the extensiometer. I'll pull it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know from experience when this is going to fail. I know, but what if you didn't know from experience? like? That's why, that's why your mystery bars, you're not going to use it. You're going to use it to test without the extensiometer. Uh, but we don't know where it's going to fail also anyway. It's a surprise. <laughs> Jeez. You know, look at the stretch we're up to. We're up to 24 inches, 24 thousandths per inch of material. <laughs> oh, it's moving. Is it hot right now? I wouldn't touch it. So you're saying it's hot? 
I'd say don't. No, I'd say if it broke while your little finger was up there, it caused it might. It's not hot. Doug, can you see any? What's happening to the curve now? Oh gosh, here it goes. Yeah. Nobody look away. Nobody look away. Well, a couple things, <laughs> couple things I want you to notice right now. Doug, where's that piece going to break? Right there. Look what's happening. It's starting to thin out at that point. So this prompt says, you know, Do it's getting right close there. to Do the that. end Do here. Right you there. best get that tester off of there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the extensiometer. Is it hot? No, it's still cold. Now, once the extensiometer is pulled, here's where, the, here's where the issue is for the test. Look at my curve. I pulled my test instrument. All my data is kind of changed where it's located from. Now the data is going to come from the frame movement, which means from this point of the test on, there's a little bit of inaccuracy. But we don't care because 99.99% .99 of the information you garner from the tensile test has already occurred. So I'm just going to hit OK. You notice now the pressure comes back up. There's that dip where the gauge was pulled. Mm -hmm. The test will go to failure. It's kind of cool watching it thin out. It's hard to believe that that's a piece of steel. Stay there, Doug. It's going to jump when it breaks. I'll pay the price. <laughs> We're up to 160 thousandths of stretch. It's happening. Uh, uh. Oh! Wow. Man. Wow. And failure. Okay, so right now it's prompting me to remove the specimen. When I hit OK, here's the part you've got to be very kind of careful with is that frame is going to wrap it back to its initial location. Well, you can see because the metal's gotten a lot bigger and it's going to stretch. But we need to take one more measurement. And to do it, it's really easy to do it in the machine. So what I do is I just use my, tog, my, my jog function. And I line up those two specimens. Tell her back together where the break is. And then what I do is I take my me measuring device and measure the diameter at that particular break point. And right now, write this down, Doug. I'm getting 161 and a half. So I started out at 250 and it broke at 161. That's a pretty healthy drop. And so now what I'm going to do, when we have our measurement, I'll go ahead and raise that head back up. You always want to make sure that you have the right direction on your one thing that you notice that's kind of cool is there's very little tension once it breaks. There's your gripping on there. And there's my specimen. I'm going to pass that around, guys. Take a look at it. And now that the specimen is out, I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And the frame comes back to that initial testing spot. And that does it that way so that you could run multiple tests. You can put up to three tests on each graph. I only want one test on my graph, and this just tells me that it's hit that switch is all it's telling me.